Welcome to Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report for May 2019. The Ford 310 Tank M1918. This is the first tank made by the United States Army and combined the automotive industry and the U.S. Army, a relationship that will go on for a hundred years. The State Report, May 2019. On Friday, June 7th, is National Donut Day. It started in 1938 as a fundraiser for Chicago's Salvation Army. Their goal was to help those in need during the Great Depression and to honor the Salvation Army lassies of World War I who served donuts to the soldiers. Soon after the United States entered the World War I in 1917, the Salvation Army sent fact-finding missions to France. The mission concluded that the needs of the U.S. Army soldier could be met with canteens and social centers, term huts that could serve baked goods, provide writing supplies and stamps, and provide clothes mending service. Typically, six staff members per hut would include four female volunteers who could mother the boys. These huts were established by the Salvation Army of the United States near Army training centers. About 250 Salvation Army volunteers went to France. Because of the difficulties providing freshly baked goods from huts established in abandoned buildings near the front lines, two Salvation Army volunteers, Ensign Margaret Sheldon and Adjutant Helen Provence, came up with the idea of providing donuts. These were reported to have been an instant hit and soon many soldiers were visiting the Salvation Army huts. Margaret Sheldon wrote one busy day, Today I made 22 pies, 300 donuts, and 700 cups of coffee. Soon the women who did this work became known by the servicemen as Donut Girls. So on Friday, June 7th, while you're enjoying your donut, please remember the history of National Donut Day and the Salvation Army. To learn more about Michigan's World War I Centennial or find out about events going on around the state, go to www.cc.org slash Michigan for the latest information on Michigan's World War I Centennial. A century ago, May 1919, on May 1, 1919, Admiral David Beatty was promoted to Admiral of the Fleet. He commanded the battlecruiser squadron at the Battle of Jutland in 1916 for the British. On May 4, 1919, was the first legal Sunday baseball game in New York City. 35,000 people watched the Phillies beat the New York Giants 4-3. May 6, 1919. At the Paris Peace Conference, they dispose of the German colonies in Africa. German East Africa is assigned to Great Britain and France, while German Southwest Africa is assigned to South Africa. May 7, 1919, at the Paris Peace Conference. The German delegation was given two weeks to examine the terms and submit their official comments in writing. The Germans, who had put great faith in U.S. President Woodrow Wilson's notion of a so-called peace without victory had pointed to his famous 14 points as the basis upon which the peace of November 19 was granted, and were greatly angered and disillusioned by the treaty. As one German diplomat put it, they could have expressed the whole thing more simply in one clause. German renounces its existence. May 8, 1919. Australian journalist George Edward Honey suggests to a London newspaper that there should be five minutes of silence. This led to the two minutes of silence in London on November 11, 1919, which followed with Remembrance Day 
In the United States, we celebrated that first as Armistice Day and later as Veterans Day on November 11th. May 10th, 1919, Charleston, South Carolina. A race riot began when five white sailors, who felt they had been cheated by a black man, were unable to find him and randomly attacked African Americans. A black man named Isaac Doctor shot at them and was killed. Within an hour, word of street brawls and shooting got back to the Charleston Naval Yard, and carloads of sailors poured into the black district. There were more than a thousand sailors and some white civilians who joined in. May 19, 1919, Samsung, Turkey. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, hero of the Battle of Gallipoli for the Ottoman Empire, lands at the Black Sea coast city, beginning the Turkish War of Independence against the Ottoman Empire. He became the first president and founder of the Republic of Turkey. May 22, 1919, Windsor, Vermont. Noted archaeologist and astronomer Andrew Ellicott Douglas discovered a correlation between tree rings and sunspot cycles, leading to the establishment of dendrochronology, which is the dating of past events by counting and analyzing tree rings. May 25, 1919. Casey Stengel becomes a baseball legend. He played for the Pittsburgh Pirates and had a pay issue with his owner, Barney Dreyfus. He was visibly upset after an argument with him over the pay. He managed to capture a baby sparrow and put it under his hat. When it was his turn to bat, he was left-handed. He walked up to the plate, whistling Yankee Doodle. He took three strikes and was called out. The fans were booing him. He walked to the fans, took his hat off, and a baby sparrow flew into the stands while he was still whistling Yankee Doodle. May 26, 1919, Paris, France. The Supreme Council of Allies, meeting at the Palace of Versailles, decided to recognize two Russian military leaders, Admiral Kochek and General Denikin, and support them against the Bolsheviks in the Russian Civil War. May 27, 1919, Plymouth, England. The U.S. Navy achieves the first transatlantic flight eight years before Charles Lindbergh became famous for the crossing the Atlantic nonstop and alone. Three Curtis flying boats, each of the crew of six, were involved. They were NC-1, NC-3, and NC-4. The Navy wanted to prove the capability of an airplane as a trans-oceanic weapon and technology. The five-legged flight began on May 8, 1919, at the Naval Air Station at Rockaway Beach, New York. It followed a route to Nova Scotia, Newf Newfoundland, the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic, Lisbon, Portugal, and Plymouth, England. Only NC-4, commanded by Albert C. Reed, flew the whole way. The entire, the entire trip took 24 days. May 28, 1919, the Republic of Armenia declares its independence from the Russian Empire. May 29, 1919, Minneapolis, Minnesota, inventor Charles P. Streit filed for patent for the pop-up toaster. Streit was determined to find a way of toasting bread that did not depend on human attention. He invented the pop-up toaster with a variable timer. Also on May 29, 1919, on an island off the west coast of Africa, during a total solar eclipse, so Arthur Eddington performs the first experimental test of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. The findings make Einstein a celebrity overnight, and precipitate the eventual triumph of general relativity over classical Newtonian physics. In September of 1916 was the first time that tanks had ever been used in a military conflict. The British sent 49 tanks into battle. These tanks were very slow and couldn't exceed four miles an hour. The early tanks played an important role on the Western Front. They increased the mobility of the Army. The problem was their reliability. Seeing that the tank was the key to breaking the stalemate on the Western Front, the British developed a smaller and lighter version of their tank called the Whippet. The French went and developed a Snyder tank mounting a 77mm cannon in it. But perhaps the most innovative design was a French FT Renault 17. 
It was designed by the Renault company and had a movable turret that could rotate 360 degrees. It could mount a Hotchkiss machine gun or a 37mm cannon and had a two-man crew. The French Renault FT-17 tank would become the model of all tanks. It was lightweight, easy to manufacture, low cost, and had a 360 degree rotating turret that could fire machine guns or have a cannon mounted in it. They could accompany infantry and be produced in massive numbers to cause a breakthrough, which was important during the stalemate of World War I. Because of the success of the French Renault FT-17 tank, the Americans needed a tank for its American Expeditionary Force in large numbers. The French couldn't supply the American Army with what they needed, so Henry Ford developed the Ford 3-ton tank known as the M1918. The size of the Ford 3-ton tank M1918 on the left is compared to other tanks on the battlefield. The middle tank is a French Renault FT-17, and the tank on the right is a British Land Cruiser mounting cannons. The design of the Ford 3-ton tank followed much along the lines of the Renault FT-17 tank. This was the tank that it was to replace. The American Expeditionary Force for the 1919 campaign expected to have a shortfall of French supplied tanks and the Americans needed to supply their own. The Ford 3-ton tank would be this vehicle. It was lightweight and easy to mass produce. The Ford 3-ton tank incorporated a long running link track lane arrangement. The track system straddled the armor hull, which provided the housing for the crew of two, a driver and gunner commander seated side by side, as well as a power packed ammunition and fuel stores. The design showcased a visibly large front idler wheel with rear mounted drive sprocket to work the six small road wheels to a track side. The hull superstructure featured a sloped angle surfaces provide basic ballistics protection and incorporated a machine gun emplacement fitting for a 30 caliber Browning machine gun. The 30 caliber Browning machine gun was fixed in the front panel of the hull superstructure. It was therefore limited in traverso and elevation and would be of limited tactical value. The driver took up a position on the right front of the hull with the gunner seated out to his left. Conditions were expectantly cramped for the two men as well as being noisy and quite smelly, characteristics of all early tanks. Entry exit was through a rectangular hinged door on a driver's position. A cupola was fitted with 360 degree vision ports in the center of the hull roof for the driver and anti-ditching arms were set in the rear hull. At three tons, the vehicle fulfilled its intended light combat role. It measured 14 feet with a width and height of six feet. Power was served through by two coupled Ford Model T four-cylinder water-cooled automobile engines developing 90 horsepower, 45 horsepower times two, and tied to a Ford planetary gearbox allowing for variable speed performances as required. The power-to-weight arrangement provided a top road speed of just 8 miles per hour with an operational range of 34 miles on 17 gallons of internal fuel. The United States Army eventually took delivery of 15 of the vehicles and the contract total was 15,000 to which Ford believed he could output 100 tanks per day. However, only two examples ever made it to France and their short-lived testing there proved them extremely limited in the growing scope of the war. Additionally, the French FT-17 became available in adequate numbers while the locally produced M17 six-ton version would be readily available after the war. World War I ended with the armistice of November 1918 and put an end to the Ford Model 1918 three-ton tank. Of the 15 claimed by the U.S. Army, only two stood the test of time to become protected museum showpieces, both now found in the United States, one at Fort Benning, Georgia, the other at Fort Lee, Virginia. 
the model 1918 Ford three-ton tank was the first U.S. designed and produced light tank in history and certainly provided the American military industrial complex with the education it needed and required for design, development, and manufacture of tanks. This would prove critical during the inner wars leading up to World War II. The Ford three-ton tank, M1918, was the first tankette designed by the U.S. It was a small two-man, one-gun tank. It was armed with an M1919 Browning machine gun and could reach a maximum speed of 8 miles an hour. Its range was 34 miles on a 17-gallon fuel tank. The tank was powered by two Ford Model T engines producing 90 horsepower. The integration of automobile components power plants into a military vehicle would start a long relationship with the U.S. Army of building tanks. The automotive industry's contribution to tank production would be that its designers stressed mechanical reliability, ease of production and maintenance, durability, standardization of parts, and a limited number of variants. Two known survivors, one is at the U.S. Army Armor and Cavalry Collection at Fort Benning, Georgia, and the second is with the Ordnance Collection at Fort Lee, Virginia. Over the last hundred years, U.S. Army tank production and design have come a long way, as seen here in this picture with the Ford three-ton tank, M1918, and the M1 Abrams tank, which is our present main battle tank. Oh, what joy and oh, what little coins. 